actually been a dozen train derailments. And according to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics from 1990 to 2021, the U.S. averaged a little over 1,700 derailments per year. So for some analysis on the pattern of derailments we're seeing, we're joined now by Constantine Taroni, the director of the University Transportation Center for Railway Safety at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Thank you so much for being here today. I think that number is probably very surprising to people, 1,700 derailments per year. What is behind that? Is it a consistent thread or is it all different problems? Um, there are many causes of derailment. Uh, some that can go anything from something simple, um, the number of like a couple of thousand, uh, where basically it's just a simple one car derails and, and, and it gets back on track, uh, to more severe problems containing like wheels uh, and, and bearings failing. Um, and, and again, derailments can be, as I said, anywhere from a couple of thousand all the way to 250 million, depending on what they're carrying and how severe the accidents can be. Um, not all accidents are severe, but some as the one in East Palestine uh, is, is one of those where bad things combine uh, to, to make like really bad accidents, um, you know, kind of like uh, um, all factors in with, with 10 cars that have toxic waste uh, plus uh, overheated bearings. So, um, yes, there are a lot. Uh, some you don't even notice or you won't even hear about because very simple, they're fixed in the rail yard, but some can have catastrophic uh, effects. Now, Constantine, Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown says railroad companies are raking in money to the detriment of public safety. I want to listen to what he had to say. The railroads continue to hold back information. The railroads continue to enrich their executives at the expense of public safety and public health and lay off workers and compromise on safety. So the fact Ohio's now had four derailments as of yesterday, four derailments in the last five months. East Palestine was the most serious, but we still have questions are there, uh, about these other derailments too. He's pretty critical of the railroad companies themselves there. Uh, your response to the senator's comments? I mean, uh, I, I do agree uh, in, in, in some sense. Is that kind of the railroads are using outdated technology to uh, monitor the condition of their uh, bearings and wheels. Um, Hotbox detectors have been in use since the 1980s. They're really outdated. They actually are measuring temperature, which is not even the correct metric uh, to look at the condition of bearings and wheels. Bearings and wheels are rotating machinery. Uh, you need sensors like uh, either acoustic detectors or vibration uh, detectors to be able to determine when they go bad. Um, when, when you're looking at heat, uh, you're basically uh, playing r Russian roulette with, with, with the safety because by the time temperature picks up uh, something bad, it's too late. It's, it's almost too late uh, for, any, uh, for, for, for you to be able to stop the train in time, which is what happened in East Palestine. Um, they're continuously going to larger number of uh, uh, cargo, like meaning, you know, we used to have eight, uh, 100 cars. Now we're going to 150 and 200. So you're increasing the number of cars, which means more cargo, but you're not looking into better ways for, to safeguard that cargo and, and making sure that um, we're continuously monitoring the condition of, of these freight cars. If you have uh, that cargo... More load and more cars. Cur I'm just curious, if you have more cargo like that, does it make things like just simple slowing down, stopping more difficult? Of course, of course. Basically, the more cars you have, so usually in a normal, let's say 100 cars, it would take you about three miles to come to a complete stop for, from when you apply the brake. Now, the more cars you have, of course, the more distance oh, and the more violent the, the braking. And of course, that violent braking, especially if you have a bad bearing, it's just going to aggravate things and it's going to cause that uh, basically cascading effect. So, of course, yes, I mean, more cars uh, will not set up for more cars. And if you are going to more cars, you need to increase your safety level. We, we just can't keep on using outdated things from the 1900s to monitor more cars, more cargo higher speeds. So that, how much of a role does the government play then, or should the government play in creating and enforcing new safety standards? Of course, in this instance, it was 
uh, toxic chemicals on the train, which was turned out to be terrible for the people in Ohio. But there's also the 2015 the Amtrak train that derailed and killed eight people that were passengers. So there's certainly a wide array of different things that are being transported on these trains. So how do you standardize the safety for everyone? I mean, uh, the, uh, there was a big concerted effort um, in the past decade to uh, put in PTC, Postal Train Control, and everyone worked together, the FRA, the AAR, the government, basically the railroads, to enforce the PTC, the Postal Train Control, and, and, and we did it, right? So it, it would take the same concerted effort to increase safety, especially in high hazardous cars. For example, um, I would say that every car that either carrying toxic waste or hazardous material should have onboard sensors. We right now have technologies that can monitor the onset of, of, of failure on, on our rolling element. Um, we should start using this, especially on these cars that are high risk, because uh, at least start there. I mean, in my opinion, all cars should have onboard sensors, but at least start with the toxic waste cars, because if those derail, they cause uh, environmental catastrophes. Right. They, I mean, they, they cause all sorts of problems that a regular car carrying, let's say, coal would cause. Constantine, one more question for you. Just 20 seconds. We're short on time. Uh, the CEO of Norfolk Southern is appearing before Congress on Thursday. If you were on the committee that's going to ask him questions, what question would you ask? I would say, like, uh, why aren't you considering um, new technologies that have proven um, to be able to, uh, ca you know, uh, be able to capture defects uh, in wheels and bearings when they occur, and why are we still using outdated technology when we know that there is much better technology that can uh, actually make sure that our trains are traveling safe and we can continuously monitor them? Uh, it's as simple as, as, as why not? Why not take advantage of the new technologies we have? Yeah. All right, Constantine Tarani, director of the University Transportation Center for Railway Safety at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Thank you for being here today. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Rita. Thanks.